Hey everybody, uh, today we have a fun one to look at. We have a BenQ HT 3050. It's uh, very similar to the 2050 and the 2150. This particular one was sent in by a viewer who needs a color wheel replaced. Uh, they sourced the color wheel. Everything should be in the box here. We're gonna open it up together. I really appreciate that they still had the original box. I know it's not always realistic to keep your box, but if you have the space and you bought a projector, it's probably worth doing. Uh, definitely makes shipping a lot easier if you ever have to do it for warranty reasons or if you sell it or, you know, whatever, really. So let's pop that open. This and this. See, I got a return shipping label, which I'll put off to the side. Some packing foam. We have remote, which I'll probably keep in there. Ah, uh, here we go. Color wheel. So just set the remote to the side. See, this is how to pack a projector. This is good. In fact, uh, stay. There we go. I want to show you how not to pack a projector. So here was a Optima I ordered for a project. It's an HD70. Has a good remote, but it was shipped just like this in this priority mail medium flat rate box and no packing no foam no peanuts no bubble wrap just the paper from the shipping label the projector itself you can see that the foot is smashed uh, the color wheel doesn't start um, when I go to start it, it just doesn't work. Now, we may revisit this in a future video, but uh, I don't know if it's worth it. But just to show you guys how not to ship something, that's how not to ship it. This is how to ship it. This guy gets an A plus in my book for projector packing. The only way he could have done better is if he would have driven it to me in his car and dropped it off. And uh, it's not really reasonable because <laughs> nobody lives near me. So let's get it out of the foam. Of course, we will use this foam for return shipping. I probably won't even have to use any of my packing material. I have a good collection of it, but this was packed so well that I should be able to just reuse his packing material. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess of the foam. These start their life as a bag, or they used to start their life as a bag, but it looks like they're just wrapping them now. That's fine. So there we go. There's the projector. Oh, oh yeah. You guys see that? We've got a, uh, come on, got a green and red chunk of color wheel. See? I'm a little surprised it went bad that fast, but. You know, if you use these, if you use your projector, like really use it, then, you know, parts, I guess, will wear out a little faster. But, hey, that's what happens. And that's one of the things I like about DLP is that they're very repairable. Uh, let's see. Let's just kind of give this thing a, uh, just kind of a quick little tour of what we got. I have not seen a 3050 in person. It's kind of cool to see. Two HDMI inputs. A 12 volt trigger to run a screen or trigger some lights or whatever. 
USB for powering your Chromecast or Fire Stick. Probably for firmware, not sure. VGA input, RS-232 control for serial ports so you can control it off a computer. Um, we got a component input, so then we have our audio in and an audio out. Now, this does have stereo speakers, so I imagine as far as projector sound goes, it's not too bad. But, you know, as projector sound goes, it's not that great. Just, you know, sounds from a projector. How, what kind of sound are you going to get out of a little speaker like that, you know? So let's take a look at the color wheel. Again, big fan of the packing. Let's see what we got here. All right, looks like it's an RGB, RGB. We'll take it out of that once we get this one out. I just wanted to make sure it hadn't uh, been damaged in shipping and it looks fine. So I'm actually going to just casually wrap it back in this set it safely off to the side. I'm going to save that bubble wrap as well. I don't need that piece of paper. Let's, let's get this fella opened and see what we have to do to get to the color wheel. It should be like a 2150 or a 2050. So the first thing we're going to do is take the uh, lamp door off that lamp cover screw bit's a little big for that so let's just use my my handheld wea driver here and those screws are captive and they have a spring behind them there's one on each side the whole half of the top comes off so there we go you can kind of see it spring out then i find it feels a little weird when you do it i find if you just grab these two edges like that don't let that screw pop back in. There we go. If you grab those two edges, it should just kind of pop up like this. And that's what it did. Now, it looks like when you put it back on, that little tab didn't get seated, so it did get bent. Oh, good. I can just push it back straight. All right. So we're just going to pay a little bit extra attention to this when we put it back in just to make sure it grabs its little edge happily without causing any trouble. Here's the, uh, the uh, what do they call it, the I, the 3050i. There's another model that has like a built-in wireless thing. I guess that's what this is for. We got an HDMI plug and uh, mini USB. Let's see, then we have our lamp, 202010 something 2020. So fairly new. out all right nice coating so this is curious the original version of this lamp which I'll stick up on the screen had a cover on the back I think if I'm wrong I'll put some text up saying otherwise or I'll edit the segment out but um, I was told by a lamp company that this was a new design and not that I didn't believe them but you know I'm skeptical um, but I've been using them they've been okay and now I have an original to compare to and sure enough I like it um, maybe I'll do a video on just those two lamps but for now we're going to stick here and uh, I won't go all ADD on you so let's get the cover off oh boy See that green? That's color wheel glass. All right. Uh, this has to come off. Actually, let me get you guys a better vantage point. So I want to take this piece off. It will catch on that wheel when the cover comes off. So kind of just forward and up uh, this screw now we don't necessarily need to remove this front piece but 
I find, at least the first time, it's a little easier. So that should be all the top screws. Now we're going to go to the bottom. And then the bottom, we have two in the front. And these are flat-faced and then recessed. Come on, there we go. So you can see those are recessed. These are not like the screws that go here. One, two, so five screws under here. Yeah, this is just like the 2150 and 2050. Come on. It's out. I'm just. Just to show you, these are these like normal BenQ helical thread screws. But you can see that's not the same kind that came out of that front with the uh, taper to it. So that should do all those. Now technically the top we could kind of muscle it off. But I found that projectors are much happier when uh, you're kind to them. Or you don't force them to do things. Uh, what I mean is that we want to pop the uh, little tabs that are holding the plastic instead of just yanking on the top. Some models, you can literally just kind of grab the top and pull and it'll just, you know, pops off without issue. But these, there's all kinds of little clips that you really should kind of work with. Um, right here, for instance, this one. So what I'm going to try to do is push that down. And then once it's down enough, we'll see if we can, come on. Here we go. My spudger is now in there, holding that side. And then I'm just going to work my way. Down the top, that just pops right off. I gotta love that. I wonder, I think he may have already been outside once just to kind of give it a once over, but I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. So we have that front face off, no damage, no snap clips, definitely dusty. So we will give this a cleaning. Then we're going to finish removing the top. Same idea, there's like clips kind of like that. So I'm just going to actually, let me get my spudger fellow and just work my way down. You can see that was one clip I got right here. Once you get like the one side moving, the other side is a lot easier. Now, these two wires, I'm not quite sure what I have to do with them. Kind of looks like they will just, yeah, I can just pop them out, pull it forward and over. That's really cool. I've actually never seen that hooked up. I've seen the provision for it in the uh, 2050 and the 2150, but never uh, in person. Now you guys can see it. They give you a tiny HDMI wire that plugs in right here. And then we have a mini USB plugged in here and that's literally just power 
you can see there's just two wires instead of four. So there's no data. It's just positive and negative. Then we have the optic assembly, which is right here. And I'm sure you guys see it. So that's, uh, that's a problem. That's probably the problem. That's probably why the color wheel went bad. So he must not have been in here yet. Maybe he started. That front just came off a little easier than I expected. But to uh, get the color wheel, we actually have to take the optic assembly out. So that means we have to take the back plate off. So to take that off, we're going to take that one, that one, that one, and that one. Then we need to take the nuts out that hold the uh, VGA and serial. These two on the serial, and then these two on the VGA. And those are five millimeter, just use a, uh, just a five millimeter nut driver. So that just, yep, there we go, that pops off. I'll just set that with the rest of it. So we need to get the main board out because the main board is going through to a connector which lines up with that board right there so there's like a connector right under there so the main board has to come out and then this metal frame underneath it everything else should be able to stay let's just see speakers let's unplug the speakers see if I can leave that speaker wire. The less I have to take out, the better. The one thing with projectors is, or repair in general, the less you touch, the better. Anything you touch has the potential to introduce a problem that may not have been there when you started. Bend a wire too much, you could crack the insulation and then crack the conductor. Uh, you flex a circuit board too much. Oh, I'll unplug that. You can introduce stress to it. Um, unplug and replug too many times. You can mess up the connectors. So again, just less is more. Um, I don't say that because you should do the bare minimum. I say that because sometimes minimum does it um you know common sense really if you feel like you're taking something apart too much don't i guess that's kind of a dumb thing to say but i think you know what i mean there we go all right that's out have the ballast still color wheel sensor then the color wheel wire. There we go. Let's just slide that wire out. Then we still have that ballast connector. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now this main board should actually pop out pretty smoothly. Let's take that one out. This screw I just took out it is a shorty. The, there's two of them, these two brass fasteners, it's where the shorties go. Uh, the rest get the longer screw. Oops, come on, get back on there. I'm gonna show you guys side by side. So the longer one, this one goes in the other spots. The two shorties go up there. And it looks like they discontinued using that little 
bendable strap for the wires. You don't really need it. All right, so those are all out. Power connectors coming up here. The DMD is plugged in under here. So I'm going to put a finger over here and a finger over here and just kind of do that until it pops loose like it just did. And there's the bottom side. An HT3050 mainboard. It's pretty good. Again, we're going to give all of this a little bit of a wipe down. So let me set this. Actually, I'm going to use that bubble wrap. Let's set it on the bubble wrap. There we go. All right, so now this metal frame has to come out. So to take this out, there are a few screws that need to come out. This one. Again, like uh, like the W1070. This is a lot like a 1070 inside. Uh, ground screw. Got that out. There's one down in there that I can't quite get to lift out on its own. There we are. And we got catching here. Our speaker wire. We got that. This little fan wire getting in there. Come on, fan wire. Play. There we are. All right, so that comes out. There's our HDMI and the power. And there's the screw. I'll just set that over here. Now, unlike the uh, 1070, HD 1075, etc., that's the ballast. This tiny little fella right here. It gets, it's uh, 380 through this connector right there. That's roughly 380 volts when it's on. Then the control comes in through that wire, just like on a standard size ballast. There's the MOSFETs, there's the heat sink, and there's the uh, lamp wire output. So it's kind of cool. I mean, really, if you look at a ballast, that's there's a lot of wasted space. So this prevents that. Uh, one of the things we are going to get in clean, that fan, I can't really see how bad it is. Looking at the other fans, I assume it's going to be like them, where it's not terrible, it's just dusty, you know. But at this point, we can take the optic assembly out. That's free. So to take out the optic assembly, we are going to remove that screw, that screw, and then there's one kind of like kind of down in there. That one? That wasn't tight at all. Neither is that one. Nor that one. None of these were very tight. Anyway. Put those in the screw band, along with the wire for the IR, and now this should come up. There we go. Ah, uh, I see. That's why they weren't tight. You see that? Oh, no, you probably couldn't. See that? Snappy, snappy. So we will fix that. No big deal, because we have the plastic. I can fix that. The blower fan, not terrible. Eh, actually it's not great. That's not great at all. Let's take the fan out. I don't know if you guys noticed that twist a little bit when I started to take it out. That's why I don't just jump on the drill. You kind of bring it up, like raise the speed, just, you know, give it a little so it'll break loose first so you don't snap those. And then let me unplug the thermal fuse. This is a thermal breaker right here, that little white thing at a specific temperature. 
which I can't quite see at the moment. Usually it's about 110 or less. Actually, let's see. Let's see what it is. And then we'll look at the fan. It is, oh, there it is, 85C. Oh, wait. Am I reading that right? Clicks on BS11A. Uh, it's down inside there. I can't see it. All right, let's, let me get it open. I'm going to show you guys how those work, or, you know, what the specs are on it in case someone needs one. Now these should be self-resetting, so you should not ever have to really replace one of these, but they do go bad occasionally. You can see it slides out. This copper is just to help transfer the heat to it and protect it. So this one's rated at, here we are. This one's rated 250 volt at seven amps is what it'll carry. And then it's a YS11A95B, X4AB. Now I think that's a 95C is what that means. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll put something up on the screen. But I'm pretty sure that means that at 95 degrees it'll trip off. So once this gets hot, like right now it's a closed circuit. Current will go through it. But if it gets hot, there's a little bimetal switch in there that opens and then kills the power until it cools down. And then it comes back on again. And the reason they have it inside here is because it's the closest to the lamp and it's actually in charge of cooling the lamp. So if the air coming through here is hotter than this rating, we want the projector to turn off instantly. And that's what that will do. And then as soon as it cools down, it lets it come right back on. So I'm just gonna set that here for now and let's look at this fan. Now, if for some reason you need a fan for a 3050, this is the part number for the blower fan. Here's the MF60251V3-CO10G99, 12 volt, 0.72 watt. Sun on brand. Most of these, I think, they use sun on. But if we look inside, you can see the way the dust is just packed in there. So let me get my, here it is. I've really, really grown to like using a brush for just knocking all of this loose. I mean, that even did a lot of good, just that. And then I didn't, I didn't even have to use the air compressor to blow that out. So that's only half of the fan. The other side still needs some love, and I see some dust on the, the board there, but really if I can just get the uh, the bristles in there and we'll spin it boy that was a cloud that came out Ugh, breathe some I like that that will be just fine. Or I think it will. Eh. Actually, let me just... Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm happy with that. We don't have any more standing crud. There's like a little bit on the blades, but I've said this before. It doesn't have to be spotless. These are designed to run with some dust. Um, even if you get it spotless, you know, within an hour or two, you're going to have some dust. So your best bet is just to get it as clean as you can within reason. You can set yourself up for trouble if you overdo it. You know, so you take something out that doesn't want to be taken out and the plastic starts crumbling. and You know, sometimes... It's better to leave well enough alone. 
I'm going to put those in by hand. In fact, any of these, when I put these back in today, I think I'm probably going to do it by hand because this plastic is a little brittle. But I need my bigger screwdriver because I can't quite get the, uh, the torque and the grip. My hands aren't that great. All right, big lot screwdriver. I love this screwdriver. It's a uh, Baco brand. I think I've got it at Big Lots. But just to work, it's very comfortable and it's got a really good bite. I think that tip is just a, it's a good shaped tip. I don't, you know, know why. It's kind of funny. It's got another stamp on it too. Ergo. Wait, there we are. Ergo, oh, I guess ergonomic. So it's a Baco Ergo. VE 8620 pH 2 times 100 100 millimeter all right so then let's take care of the rest of these fans and then we'll get to the uh, optic assembly and the color wheel but let's get let's get these fans cleaned off so again just kind of knocking the dust loose and then uh, and go hit it with the uh, vacuum much 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 better and that's an exhaust fan so the air direction arrow that way so I'll set that back in this one this fan has the air arrow pointing again that way. So now we're going to do the same thing, just, just kind of knock the, uh, I'm trying to loosen it up. Just want to get it loose so that when I go and run the uh, vacuum over it, it just pulls it all off. All right, next. Much better. So again, air direction. That way, fan here. Now the only other thing I really need to do, I gotta do this fan. Um, I want to get the loose dust out of the uh, chassis. So what I'll probably do is just go over to the air compressor and get the vacuum going, and just kind of set the vacuum next to the housing of the uh, projector, and then just kind of let the air go for a little bit and see if it just kicks up clouds and then draws it in that's usually what happens and we're back in it uh nice and clean now now this fan is an intake fan so that does go that does go in here actually i think it goes i don't know i had it the right way and that goes into the main board. So all the dust is out of here. This is good. So here's the optical assembly. The uh, color wheel is behind here. There it is. We can see that it threw a whole set of segments out of it. And so what probably happened was it got hot. That aluminum flexed that ring on the front and made the gap bigger and then the rotation and the centrifugal force just made the glass fly out. So to change it is not too bad. All we have to do is remove these two screws. And then under here that over there's another screw down there that comes out and then the whole thing should come loose here we are there it is all right let me uh let's 
unplug the sensor, slide that out because we're going to have to deal with this first, get those three screws out to mount the wheel. Set this stuff out of the way. So there's the old wheel. I realized I was getting out of frame, so I'm going to use this foam to kind of help me stay in frame. And then I'm going to remove the sensor. I don't think I really need to, but I wanted to look at it and make sure it was clean. That little set of uh, optics there, it's an electric eye, it's an um, infrared transmitter receiver. I'm going to make sure there's no dust on that, and there's not, so that's good. What that does is it looks for that little black mark there. Every time that black mark goes past that little eye, it sends a, a pulse to the brain that tells the projector when the color wheel has passed a certain color segment passed. In this case, uh, I think it was red. No, blue. All right, so it pulses off the blue because you can see it's right by the blue segment there. That just tells it its position so that when um, it's synchronizing the colors to the picture, it knows where the color wheel is. Um, if you put a new color wheel in, sometimes the colors will be off. The purples will be green, green will be purple. That usually means the uh, settings for the index are incorrect. And that's settable in the uh, service menu. Usually, the new wheels have it preset, so you don't have to worry about it. The sticker's in the same spot, it doesn't matter. You don't have to change that. Let's see, we'll take these three screws out. And that should, yep, there we go. There's the broken wheel. Let's get the new one. Come on. Well, that looks nice. Looks very good. See if I can. Yep, I can. Oh, that's good. I'm really trying not to touch the glass, even with gloves. Way better. Way, way better. All right, so now let's get that black cover back on. We're gonna have to feed the wire through it. It's gonna go, is that clean? Yes, it's clean. It's gonna go, let's see, wire goes through here. Up, 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 up. And that's gonna go like that. And this has to go here. Come on. Line up. There we are. In fact, let me unstrap that wire. And we'll redo that. I'm going to reset that wire once we put this back in. Let's set the wheel here. Yep, okay, that's good. And then this bracket thing is going to go there. Alright, so 
So that's screwed in. Now I can redress the wire through that little notch on the side and then through there. I'm just gonna just kind of dress that color wheel wire over there so we can finish by putting this piece back on. This is where the lamp assembly connects like that. You can see your lamp shines through there. That's where the light comes in. Now if for some reason you have a shadow some of the things to look for is to make sure that your lamp is not tilted like this, you know, either way, or if this outer shield, this thing here, if that moved, it's kind of hard for that to happen. The other thing could be the uh, light tunnel. There's this metal, that metal shield there. They can get hot and warp sometimes, but uh, mostly I would just make sure the lamp is straight. I know I've, I've actually had somebody recently ask me about a uh, 3050 where they had, I'll do it on the camera here, they had like blue like that, and then like another shadow over here, and it was kind of dim. I believe the uh, lamp was an original from BenQ, so it should be fine. You know, the usual. But I would be more surprised if it was a projector issue. I suspect a lamp issue in that case. All right, let's get this back on. There we are. Just want to get this back into place. So I got to get those two pins. There we are. Yep. That's good. I like it. You know what? While we're here, let's check the DMD. I'm gonna make sure I didn't blow any dust into it. And maybe I'll change the uh, heat sink compound. Yeah, I definitely. Look at that. It's all dry and crusty. Oh yeah, you guys can probably see that. Look at that, that's all dust. So we'll clean that. The inside's actually not too bad. Conveniently, the uh, microfiber that the color wheel was wrapped in will be perfect for this. I like it. Yep. And we'll set that back down. Yep, lined up good. And get some fresh heat sink compound. There it is. The old stuff just crumbled right off. Now I'm not gonna wipe off the back of the DMD 
because there's just some on the edge. Most of it's most of it was on the aluminum. Put the old wheel in here. We'll see if he wants that back. I suspect he won't, but you know, it's not mine. I always like to give back parts unless they don't want them because they're not mine. All right, so that is now cleaned. Color wheels installed. New heatsink compound on the back. That means we can start reassembly. First things first, gotta fix that. So let me go grab my heat shrink tubing. All right, so this one will be an issue. We'll put some glue and then I'll hit it with the heat shrink and that'll cinch that in. But this side's gonna be a little more difficult because I can't, I wish this wasn't sticking up so high, but it clearly needs to be there. So I think this one might not get any heat shrink. Now it does have the one behind it, so that'll help. But mm, I kind of wish the uh, kind of wish that heat shrink would have fit over that. I don't have anything that big. Um, actually, no, I do have something that big, but it's actually too big. I don't have uh, a good in between. Plus, it's just kind of, it's this piece, I think. Is it just this piece? Yeah, see, it's just that little piece. I might be able to get away with... Oh, wait, no, it's this one. You. It's that piece. Yeah, I might get away without the heat shrink. Let's see what happens. Let's, uh... Let's get some thick... CA glue. I like this thicker stuff for plastic repairs because it's, you know, it lets me uh, kind of set it there and it'll kind of fill the gaps itself and help reinforce itself. Try not to glue my fingers in there. All right, so actually that's been sitting for about a half hour. That's actually not bad. I, I'm gonna leave that. Uh, I might even try that with this one. Let's see how it goes. Same thing, just let's kind of goop the CA glue on there and get my pseudo putty knife. And then, oh, no, 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 no. Now I think we will do shrink tubing on this one, but I have to trim it slightly, just a little bit too long. I want it below the top. Actually, let me make sure that that's, yeah, that should be fine. I just want to make sure that wasn't going to get in the way and cause problems with reinstalling that. All right, let me let that set up, and then we will 
reinstall the optic assembly and finish this up. There we go. That should be good. So now we're going to put the assembly back in. Start putting it all back together and literally we just kind of kind of set her in. Yeah, it's like that. That'll be good. All right, so screws. One, two, three. And these are the same screws that go in on the bottom. I'm going to put the back one in first. And I'll just hold it. And now I'm going to put this one in next. And because of the uh, damage to the plastic, I am definitely doing the turn it backwards before turning it forward thing. Like that. There we go. Oh, it started to move. Mm. Little bit of a crack opening. I do wish I had heat or a heat shrink that would fit around that. But I think we'll be okay if I just use the uh, the CA glue to rebond it. CA glue it melts the uh, plastic and then lets it resolidify. And that's how it glues. It's kind of like a solvent. That's why if you put it on plastic, sometimes the plastic will get kind of squishy. It's not quite as solventy as uh, toluene, but works pretty well. So I'm hoping that will take care of that. But either way, the rest of them are back on. It's clearly not going anywhere. Better than it was, for sure. So now... Let's plug this back in. Can't forget that. I have forgotten that before. And then you get everything back together and there's no power. And it's because you forget that. Uh, now let me move the camera so you guys can see the rest. There we go. Oh yeah, you guys can see that well. Now let's get the metal. Metal frame. So we're going to have metal frame main board upper cover or upper uh, metal shielding the top the front the lamp and the lamp door oh this is going on for the lamp door so first we're going to put this back in i'm just going to hold these wires in there get that ground ready let me just push these over so they're not in the way. And the trick, trick, the thing you need to do with these, these little forks here need to slide over the plug. Don't let your fan wires get caught under the metal. And then make sure the low voltage goes up through the center. Really, everything should just kind of drop back down into place. You should never have to force anything. If you feel like you have to force it, go back over your work. Something's not right. Now, sometimes you need to give things a little bit of love to get them back into place, but it still should drop back in and sit in place. Like if this went in and it was you know, kicked up like that, I'd have to check to find where the the wire that got caught underneath was, because usually that's what happened. Let's pull those back out of the way. Then we have our screws that go through this and then through the main board. Oh, 
Well, I lucked out on that one. That one was already in the uh, in the slot properly. There we are. Oops. Teaches me for looking away at the camera. That one I may have caught incorrectly because it was a little tighter than I expected. And then, let's see. Now, at some point when you're doing reassembly on one of these, you will have three short threaded screws like this. Remember, two of them are for the DMD. The third one goes here and holds that metal down right there. So that one goes there, then you should have two. Then I'm gonna feed the color wheel wire back through. And remember, blue is gonna be down. It's gonna be like that when it plugs in. And then I think I have one more yeah, one more screw for holding the bottom, that metal frame. Right here. All right. Good, good, good. Happy, happy. That's all in place. That's all in place. I like to give this a little wiggle because it'll get caught sometimes. And main board is going to go back in. Now the another trick thing you got to watch out for: these pins and that connector need to line up perfectly. If you offset it, uh, usually it won't damage anything. But your projector is not going to work. I think it just kind of sits in standby. So let me get, let's get this kind of lined up. Get these extra wires out of the way. And then I look through the front. You can look through that hole. And it pushes down. And that should, as long as no other wires are in the way, that should also line up the D &D, DMD connector. There we are, it's not Dungeons and Dragons. And your screw holes should be pretty lined up. Yep, looks good to me. So now we can start oops start plugging wires back in. One thing I did not mention the uh, HDMI these tabs need to be on the front side of this metal. You see how it's kind of bent and cut back. They don't want to be on the inside. They want to be on the outside. It's important. Let's see, I can put a screw in here. I just want to put a few screws in to hold everything so that we can test it. So any screw that I don't have to take back out, I'll put in. So looking at this cover, we can put in that one and that one. Yeah, these two. And I already put in that one. So the two shorties. There we are. All right, so it's going to go out there. It's here. Let's plug the color wheel in. We'll dress that wire 
after everything works. Oh, that might actually do it. Color wheel sensor. Come on. There we are. Blower fan. I think they call this the DMD fan because it blows across the optics. because it blows air across that heat sink and everything. And let's see, here's our power for that HDMI thingy. And then plug in our HDMI. Actually, I'm not gonna plug that in because it has to plug through here. So we will not plug that in yet, but the other thing we can plug in. Then over here, let's see, let's route that fan. It's gonna go in here. And that little guy goes there. Ballast is connected. The uh, speakers we're probably going to have to unplug to put. Well, eh, maybe not. Maybe I can get that all on with this like that. We'll see. All right. So let's get my patent. My patent pending door switch bypass tool. Wedge that in. Put Mr. Lamp in. I might be able to leave this after it's installed. I know uh, some you can't put the cover on if the lamp is uh, not in position. Like if you go to put the top on, it'll kind of lock the lamp inside and you'll never be able to get it out unless you take the top off again. But in this case, I don't think that's an issue. All right, so that's in, that's in, that's good, that's good, that's good. I'm gonna move some of the top pieces out of the way so that we can just do a little bit of a test by shining it on the wall. So let me, uh, I'm gonna move the camera a little and bring you guys right back. All right, let's get some power. All right, standby light. That's good. So when I hit the power, we should hear the color wheel spin up, lamp should strike, fan should come on at their pace. Uh, we should hopefully hear a little boop boop from the, uh, what do you call it? The speakers, that's the word I'm looking for. And then we should have a picture on the screen. Color wheel came on, lamp ignited, no boo boop, but this might not do that or they have it disabled. I know my uh, my BenQ does that. Let's see if I can focus it this close to the wall. Not really. Hell yeah. Do have some light leakage. Yeah, a little bit of light leakage. That white dot there. It is coming from the side. There we go. You can see that a little better. There we are, source. That looks good. Uh, menu. I should know this. I don't. Menu's the center. All right, that looks good. This looks really good. Uh, I'm happy with this for this. So I'm going to turn it off and we're going to finish reassembling and uh, bring it over to the other side and get it tested. 
and then uh, get it packed up and uh, sent back out to him tomorrow. I'm going to put the upper shield back on. It goes over the back. And then the HDMI for the side. That wraps over. There's these two tabs that wrap around like that. That's good. Now let's put some screws back in this screw. Let's go, yeah. And I'm not going to snug that just yet. Just bring it right down to right before it stops. And then I want to make sure it's all square and that that HDMI plug is happy. This one I can, that one I can snug down. <clears throat> but I wanted to make sure that that, yeah, good. I needed to make sure that this was plugged in securely. And then I feel good tightening that and tightening that the rest of the way. I'll just double check those. They're all good. Now remember, these have to come back through the upper case, so I'm just going to set those there for now. Let's see if we can redress that speaker wire without having to take it out. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Yep. Oh, come on. There we are. Yep, I like it. I like that a lot. All right, now we're gonna get our, oh, I forgot to put this little strappy guy back on. And I'm gonna modify the design a little bit. Originally, the strappy guy was on the uh, front screw here. but we're gonna put them underneath this screw because of the uh, thread situation with the front one. It'll still do the same thing that it was doing in the front screw, it'll just do it back here. All right, so that's this wire. This is the uh, front IR, so it's kinda needed, you know. If you want to use a remote control in any way there we are and then that will come through here and plug into that fascia that goes on so now we can put the back on and then the top yeah so here's the back make sure these guys are all in position they are and this literally just kind of rolls up. Come on. There we are. Yeah, literally just right into place. Then, let's get the machine screws. These guys go here. I like to put these in first because they help hold the back in place. two of those and then there's going to be two for here and then those four and it's a little silly but I like them to be that way and now these guys This one that one didn't make as good a noise all right and then these
these. out of this box of gloves and good riddance they're terrible I mean they keep my hands clean but they're uncomfortable and they they just like they tear for no reason or they tear for minimal reason it's not no reason obviously something is abrading them Abla abrading abrading rubbing on them scratching them something's making them fail but they shouldn't so anyway screws are in on the back let's get ready to put the top on so the top cover it has the rubber assembly with the buttons we have to be cognizant of that because that will actually drop out if you're not careful uh, usually it'll stay in place long enough to put the top on, but I usually just kind of hold a finger like that as I get it ready. And then I get these tabs where they have to go, right by the fan. And those other tabs by the other fan. And then we'll just set it there because now we have to get these wires back through. Oh, and the buttons are falling out. I gotta start it all over. Push the buttons up. Let's get, let's see, that. Yeah. Okay. And come on, let's get. Come on, really? It's because it's twisted. The um, ferrite bead on the wire does not make that easier. Okay, those are in. Push the button pack back up. That wire goes in there. There we go. There we go. There we go. And so that wire goes here. I can't remember which side was up, so I think it was this way. And then this wire goes there. That way. So yeah, it looks like they were both flat side up. And then we're just going to go around and give this all a little squeeze. Not bad. I like that. Then we've got screws to put in on the bottom. I could probably do those with the drill, but again, plastic is a little brittle. another clip that just caught that's what that noise was all right can I put yep I can want to see if I had to hold off on putting that one in before the front went on and I do not that's good to know so all of the bottom screws can go in before you put the front piece on, just so you know. All 
right. Go back to the front. We need to put this piece back on. That goes there. And then we have two more of the of those these guys. that that's good now we can put the front back on there's going to be two screws that go on the bottom a little bit of dust that got caught on the edge when I was cleaning it a little dust bunny of sorts come on there we are and then that goes on there. guys and then we have one more screw after this one that one goes there and then the last one right here the lamp door on. Now remember I got to pay attention to that. Nice. It actually feels really good. Oh, too small or too big I mean. Let's get that one. Snug those in. Let's plug it in here, and then I'm actually going to plug in a signal here too, because I'm using my long throw test area at the moment with a, another projector, so I can't really do a demonstration there. I'm going to test it over there, but for the video I'm going to just do it here so that I don't have to shut down the other projector because I need it to run for another half hour. Let's get to that so I can get to the focusing and turn her on. Let's give her her first to last test. So if uh, everything goes well here, then I'm going to end the video, but then I'm just going to cook it for another hour or so on the other side, and then I can send it back to the fellow tomorrow. So as you can see, da -ding, we have picture. HDMI 1, let me go to HDMI 2, or HDMI 1, because that's what he has it set to. And we should have a picture here in a moment. Should be my Raspberry Pi. Ba, 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 ba. Still booting. I just turned it on, so it's probably still booting. No, while it's booting, let's just check in the menu. Let's see what kind of lamp hours we got. Timer. All right, so this lamp has, let's see, 5316 maybe? 
if this is the original lamp if it is it's actually not a bad picture for a, a lamp that old because I see here smart eco is 5208 and lamp usage is 50 or normal is 53 so I'm sure we could go inside the service menu and check and see if the timer's been reset oh, let me get out of the menu and let's get a this is a black picture that's good and let's see we know the white's good because we're looking at that come on here's red There's green, green, and then blue we'll look at. Green looks good. Blue looks good. And color bars also looks good. White, yellow, cyan, whatever that lightish blue is, green, purplish, red, blue, black. That looks good to me so let's see volume down good because I got to start my movie oh, there it is all right I'm gonna let it run uh, colors look good I know this movie well the picture quality is not great because of shining on the wall and it's a rip from a VHS I think but this is how you replace the color wheel on a BenQ uh, HD 3050 there's the old color wheel right there uh, if you have any questions about doing that yourself go ahead and uh, stick it down in the comments I'll put a link in the description to where you can buy a replacement lamp that has the proper lens on it and everything um, I'll also put a link to a seller that I use for procuring parts if you need to get a color wheel yourself. Um, again, if you have any questions about other models, you can go ahead and stick them in the comments there too. Uh, I try to get back to everybody on my comments. It's getting a little harder, but I'm going to keep trying and do it as long as I can do it. So, uh, as always, thank you for watching.